what's your story? Have we got a show for you tonight? For those of you who are going to turn 50 in 2020, you know what a marvelous thing that is. We've got something that's turning 50 that is equally as marvelous, and my guests tonight are going to tell you all about it. My guests are Mr. James Handley and Mr. Haldemira, who will introduce themselves to you right now and tell you what they do and why they are here. We'll start with James. James? Well, I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, we uh, co-founders of Sydney Studio. We opened in 1970, and we actually started working on the project in 1969. So um, the, the actual official opening of Sydney Studio was February 16th, 1970. So I've been there 50 years, and uh, that kind of crept up on me. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been fascinated with film and had a great time the whole time. And met so many people, seen so many films. Um, it's really an extraordinary thing to suddenly realize that, hey, been there 50 years. Because <laughs> I wasn't planning to make it my life. But... Are you a graduate of Trinity? Uh, well, sort of. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm within half a course of graduation. But um, my, I got diverted by both Cine Studio and demonstrations against the Vietnam War. Uh -huh and uh, various other things politically that were going on at the time. And so um, it was really, uh, I, I was working part-time jobs to pay the bills, but I was volunteering at Sydney Studio. Um, uh, Peter and I, Peter McMorris, my co-founder, uh, we both worked at Sydney Studio as volunteers for about 12 years, and then we eventually started getting paid. So both of us had other jobs at the time. So you can see we weren't really planning to make it our lives, but it turned out that way. But I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Elder, what, what do you do? Why are you uh, here tonight? So I'm a multimedia producer for Trinity College in the communications office. But prior to that, I was actually the um, a board member on Cine Studio as board, and I've been part of Cine Studio, or it's been part of my life for about 25 years oh. since I started going there as a resident of the city of Hartford in my teen years, uh, getting on there to do um, watch different films, catch like double features of Hitchcock movies. And I like to call it my third home. That's my living room where I would go watch a good movie, any type of movie that uh, was out, like inter uh, international films, um, different art movies. That's where I discovered Hitchcock, Wells, Kubrick, and of course Tarantino at the time when I was growing up. Like that was the new wave of, of uh, alternative films. So you are responsible for producing the intro that we saw at the beginning of the show. Yes, we're doing a short piece to talk about Cine Studio's 50th year with yeah. interviews with James and Peter, show how instrumental the students are to, and the volunteers are still to the, to the theater and why, why people should continue going and why people should continue supporting it. Well, either one of you can take this question. When is the celebration for the 50th? What day in February is it? Uh, so it's going to be Saturday, the 22nd of February. It's going to be the first film will be um, Yellow Submarine, followed by a celebration and then an evening show of Alice's Restaurant. And I'll let James discuss <laughs> why those two films in particular, why they matter. and Why, why Yellow Submarine and Alice's Restaurant? James? Well, that was our founding show in February of 1970. That's what we opened with. In those days, believe it or not, people routinely went to double features, sometimes five or six hours long, and they would stay for both features. Um, and uh, so one of the things that we wanted to do to distinguish ourselves was to bring films together in double features that might interest the same audience. But when we were opening, we were having trouble dealing with the distributors because we had no record. And so we were just calling them up and say, who, who are you? You know, they don't know. So we eventually managed to persuade a gentleman by the name of Craig Rand, who worked with uh, United Artists in Boston. He was a film booker. And uh, he seemed to be intrigued by the idea. We were asking for something. You have to understand that when you have a double feature, basically the producers have to split the money that comes in. And not every producer is willing to do that, because they always think their film is the better of the yeah, half. And so yes, they don't want yeah. to do this. So yes. in the case of Yellow Submarine, which was owned by the Beatles, and, and, but it was being released by United Artists. But uh, uh, in the case of Alice's Restaurant, United Artists had it. MGM had an interest in it. So we were asking a sort of leading question, could we play the films together, meaning one admission for both films. And so Craig Rand 
was intrigued with the idea, but he was obviously, by the tone of his voice, he was, what the hell are you talking about? You know, he wasn't taking it seriously, but he agreed to come down. So us, I think seven founders, w took him out to dinner at Friendly's, which was on the corner of Vernon and Broad yes, at the time. Yes, I remember where it was, yes. And um, we, uh, we, you know, long hair and the whole sort of, you know, <laughs> stereotype. You can just imagine. Well, oh, anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we had dinner uh, and he, we were talking and talking. And so um, he was intrigued to find out who we were. He seemed interested in our being caring about movies so much. And uh, so finally, you know, I think we'd been there about an hour and a half. And so I said, so how much would it cost to get, <laughs> get these two films together? Because basically that's what the film industry was about. You know, you had to put up some money up front, right? Yeah, so he immediately said $500. And we sort of looked at each other. And we said yes, with no idea of how we were going to get this $500. <laughs> but we said yes, we would do it. And so um, as it happened, our a faculty advisor, Lawrence Stiers, uh, he, he fronted the money for the, the $500, lent Sony Studio the money to do it. So we were able to make that our first program, and it was a huge success. Ticket prices, believe it or not, were $1.25 for a double feature, but we sold out repeatedly with it for, for I think, nearly a week. And uh, as soon as we had that record, all of a sudden the distributors were calling us. Yes, so that's yes. how we got rolling. And, got and at rolling. that point, uh, they realized, you know, well, we knew what we were doing with our audience, and we were able to bring people in, and it was a new venue for them. So uh, they started to be interested. Well, give me, uh, give the audience, if you will, an overview of what's going to happen on that day, with time frames and what's happening. Is there are there receptions going on, or where are they going to be held? Are they uh, all on campus or What's going on there? Well, in the tradition of our kind of simple approach to things, <laughs> we're going to show, both films will be showing for free. Um, we're going, not going to sell tickets. Anybody can come and attend for free. We'll have the uh, showing of Yellow Submarine at uh, 2.30. And then after the showing of Yellow Submarine, we'll have a reception in the lobby, the lower lobby of the theater with a cake. And just a very simple celebration to meet people and talk. And you know, we're hoping that some people, we, we, we often find people from the early years. Actually, a couple of nights ago, somebody came to, uh, to see Ford versus Ferrari. And they said, oh, yes, I remember coming to your Midnight Horror Films in 1969, 70, because we were already showing Midnight Horror Films. And I was like, uh, really? You know, <laughs> that's amazing. So. We're hoping people will come back, and then um, there'll be enough time before the 7.30 show for people to have dinner if they want to go out and have dinner and come back. Uh, again, the evening show will be uh, free of charge. Alice's Restaurant, one of the significant things about Alice's Restaurant uh, is that it's a film about uh, with Arlo Guthrie, uh, Woody Guthrie's son. Yes. And um, many of, well, m many, but several of the people who worked at Sydney Studio knew Alice's Restaurant up in the Berkshire and would go up there and knew some of the people. So it, that's one of the reasons it's a sentimental favorite at Sony Studio. It's a, uh, it's a film that reminds everybody who remembers that, 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 that beginning period. period. Yeah, yeah. And it was a, the story is a, is a sort of you know, very simple, um, uncomplicated story about uh, Arlo Guthrie's character getting a ticket from the local policeman for dumping illegally. Mm. And um, it, it revolves around that, but it has very much the ethos of the 1970s. And Arlo Guthrie himself, you know, is a, a fascinating uh, figure. And we're hoping, we don't know, we haven't talked to him, but we're hoping maybe he'll see it on the schedule and think, oh, maybe I should maybe come I back. Should go. <laughs> so, so just for clarity's sake, the first showing is at 2.30. Yeah, Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine, and there's a break. Yeah. Yep. And the second showing at is, is at 7.30. Right, of okay. Alice's Restaurant. And in between those two is a reception down in the In the, in the uh, lower lobby. The lower lobby yep. of the theater. Yep. And there will be no charge for either show. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Right. It would be a community event welcoming people to come, maybe first timers, yeah. maybe people who have come before. And of course, uh, we'll be there. All right. and hopefully, lots of Beatles fans, lots of Guthrie fans, and there are scheduled com uh, costume contests. Yes. Oh, that's right. There's uh, a costume contest that's very between yes. Yellow Submarine and uh, 
Alice's Restaurant, there will be some prizes. So, so people are going to dress up in period costumes? Is that what well, you're Well, they can dress as. They can dress costumes, period, whatever they want. Yeah, whatever they want. They can dress as hippies or they can dress as blue meanies or, you know, like, uh, I think there's a rich repertoire of odd characters in Yellow Submarine. To draw from, yes. Yeah, but there's, yeah, Alice's Restaurant has a few as well. So, um, Or just come as any character come, from, from cinema. That's right. That's <laughs> from right. cinema. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Now, I understand Cine Studio has something outside that they're very proud of now that just recently was added. Uh, what yeah. was that? Well, uh, we finally, after uh, 49 years, got a sign. Uh, one of the things about Cine Studio that has always been true is it's kind of been a secret. You know, people like Helder have found Cine Studio, and it, you know, this is great when you find the secret. Oh, yeah. But yes, yes. It's, it, it's hard sometimes. People who are new to the city, they might not know they could come on campus, and so we had this beautiful entrance door. And what we did, we had a very subtle sign. We changed the light bulbs in the lanterns on either side of the doors to orange. And we told people, look for the orange lanterns, because oh. none of the other ones were that color. So then, uh, just uh, like about five years ago, um, a donor who was a Cine Studio worker and enthusiast for Cine Studio said, you know, I've always wanted you to have a sign. And so he wanted to donate the money to put a sign on the building. And uh, it was a long drawn out thing. He, he had found an artist, um, a wonderful artist named Coco Rains in Boston who designed a sign. And she had worked with the Boston Architectural Society goodness, before yes. putting a sign on a brownstone building. And so, um, and then we had um, help with uh, various people. Um, this Professor uh, Krista Triff of the uh, arts department uh, with uh, his art history and architecture. She uh, helped us with the design of the sign so that it would fit in the building, it would fit the architecture, but it also could be removed at a future time if anybody wanted to, that it would not damage the building. So it took many, many months of experimenting and bringing in the, the uh, fine arts group at the city of Hartford, the zoning people at the city of Hartford. Everybody got to see how it would work. And then when it finally got lighted last spring, it was like people were coming up and taking selfies within 10 minutes, including the president of Trinity, <laughs> Joanne Berger Sweeney. And so, so it, it was immediate. And people were coming up to us and saying, wow, you finally got a sign. You know, it's like so exciting. And for us, it really was. It was like yeah. it took so long, you know, but it was I remember so those meetings just always talking <laughs> yeah. about it will be this time, this time, this time. <laughs> right. It's, as you pointed out in emails and whenever we talk about it, it's a wonderful work of art in its own right. It just, it's so beautifully iconic looking. It should have been there the whole time. You walk <laughs> through the archway from the parking lot and you can just see it. You can see it across, across the quad. It changes colors regularly and it just is, it, it fits so well on the building, which itself is a work of art and was built in 1930s? 1935, yes. It's a McKim Mead and White building. Yeah. from the 1930s. And it's a brownstone, a classic brownstone building that is registered. And uh, the actual nature of fitting a work of art to that building yes, was yes. very fine needle to thread. And it's yes. beautifully done. And it, 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 it creates an aura around it because of its changing colors at night. It creates a changing aura around the entrance. And uh, the great thing, practically speaking, is that people who are driving by can see the yes. sign. Yes. and be reassured that that's where we are. Yes, yes, yes. Now, um, I was going to ask about the renovations at the, stu at the uh, studio. It's, it's recently undergone some renovations internally, correct? Correct. Yes. We got yeah. a whole new bunch of seating. Like That's all I can say. <laughs> all the seats that were there got ripped out, which I've had people tell me as both a fan and as a member and as someone that's always touting Cine Studio as one of our great pieces in Hartford. They're always like, yeah, but the seats are so bad. They can't complain about that anymore. They're wonderfully uh, suited to the space. They're opera seats. They're comfortable. They are just, you go in there and just enjoy a movie just sitting there. What about prices now? Uh for families to come, is it price? Is it family friendly? Well, the price is uh, the the full price of a ticket for most shows is ten dollars. But people who become friends of Cine Studio, it's seven dollars or eight dollars for uh, senior citizens or children. Um, so and it's around. It's a little bit less than um, a commercial uh, uh, mall type theater. But um, we um, we really have a very varied 
crowd that comes, and we certainly have a lot of people bring families and kids to certain things. We're hoping with Yellow Submarine, too, that that's the kind of thing that people can bring uh, bring their kids to and, and enjoy it. And uh, with the various, one of the secrets to our continued existence over 50 years has been that we've had such a varied program all the time. We're constantly yeah. calling on different audiences. Yes, so yes. we might one time be showing um, Yellow Submarine. At another time, we might be showing Ford versus Ferrari or you know, a Fellini film, a foreign film with English titles, something like that. So we're always having um, a, a, a different audience come in. And by word of mouth, and now with the sign, of course, they know where to come. Yeah. <laughs> that this brings in people who wouldn't ordinarily have thought about it. And this is extraordinarily important now because many people think of watching streamed movies on TV in their ho living rooms, and they are not really aware of how exciting it can be to come to a place like Sydney Studio, yes. where they can actually not only see a magnificent picture, but one of the things related to the seats actually is the seats we selected were to enhance the sound. We're, we're very well known oh, for our sound acoustics. quality, yeah. in particular, to have very good dialogue, even when there's a lot of noise or sound effects going on, people can still understand the soundtrack. And the seats we got with wooden backs are designed to be able to create that sound atmosphere just perfectly at the right uh, frequency around the human voice range. So you get a very good quality of sound. Now, if people want to contribute, uh, say, money to Cine Studios uh, to keep it going, how would they do that? Well, the easiest thing is to go on the web uh, to, to cinestudio.org, and uh, they can click on the contribution button on the page, or they can call us. Um, uh, they can call us in the office at 860-297. Uh, 2544 and speak to me or to Peter or somebody else who's in the office. And um, you can also, uh, if somebody comes to the box office now, they can actually become friends of Cine Studio right on the there. spot, yeah. right there. And um, I would like to add the best way to support us is to come and see the films. Yep. Yep. And one in, um, way to really get people to come, especially for students, we have such a huge collection of um, colleges and universities around. We do offer student discounts from any yeah. college with any student ID. So great way to come see, learn about films. Um, as, he was, as James was saying about the different variety of movies we've seen, I mean, just this summer we had a whole retrospective of Kubrick. Yeah. Um, we just had Apocalypse Now. So we're showing a lot of films from history, but we're also showing a lot of really great contemporary films like Ford versus Ferrari, which I just saw there this weekend. And we have a great 4K projector, one of the first. That's what I was going to ask about. What's yeah. the, how do you project? Is it old-fashioned uh, projector? Both. Or is it, uh... <laughs> well, we actually are up to the up to the minute with uh, the technology. We actually maintain uh, physical 35 and 70 millimeter projectors. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we showed the film Aeronauts in 70 millimeter on the physical 70 millimeter well, film. Yeah. Which can I just interrupt for a moment? That's a film that's being streamed on Amazon. And it's a beautiful looking film, but to see it screened yeah. in its film, like an actual film on, on the big screen is great. Well, yeah. It's a very different experience. That's one of the things that is really important is to get uh, people to take the chance who haven't done so to come actually to a theater where the technical standards are extremely high. We have a lot of features at Sydney Studio which you, you, you wouldn't always experience in most theaters. The extraordinarily good sound the picture is very large compared with the seating area, so it feels like it's filling your field of vision completely. And it's a feeling that you have of really being absorbed into the story. And part of that, for example, that people experience at Sydney Studio and literally almost nowhere else is a curtain on the screen. Yes, I love that. We curtain. have a magnificent yeah. rising Austrian shade curtain. And my when I was learning about uh, being a projectionist um, way back in the 60s, I learned with uh, a, uh, an expert who worked at MGM Studios who always told me that he had been taught way back in the 30s that you should never show a blank screen to the audience, that the blank screen was a reminder of the technology, and that actually what you wanted to do is open the screen to the beginning of an adventure, to the beginning of a journey. And then the curtain would close at the end of the film, and that would 
be the closure of the story rather than sitting being, uh, you know, reminded of a blank screen or worse still, you know, like 20 minutes of commercials, that, that really um, the cinema experience that we provide is something that is wedded to the art of cinema, that you're really paying attention to these sort of details. And one more thing I would add to that, the other great experience about coming to see films at Cine Studio is that you're doing it as a community which is something we, uh, yeah. as a board and as an organization, want to really remind people is that cinema is part of a community. It's, it's built by a community, put, put together yeah. by a community. The story of Cine Studio is all about students coming together to make something happen. Yeah. And I mean, I was just there with some friends. I organized this little trip of like, let's go see Jojo Rabbit together yeah, as a group. Yeah, yeah. And afterwards, go get a cup of coffee or something to, to, discuss, it, to discuss it, have a little f post film like, break it down, what did we like, what didn't we like, and why it worked, and why, to me, it's the best film of the year. But that's just my own James, thing. Oh, but excuse that, me. That, that, that community aspect of it is, is absolutely, you hit upon something really central, which is that when we started Sydney Studio, we were a community of students who were fanatical about film, yeah. and we wanted to meet other people and share the, the love of film with other people. And we started out more like a cooperative than anything else, in that we all cooperated to do things. We didn't have a hierarchy. I mean, I wasn't the head of it, or nobody was the head of it. Yes, we all just yes. did things. And the amazing thing is that 50 years later, Sydney Studio operates more or less like a cooperative. Yes, we have a co-director, co-directors, and we have a board, but the actual day-to-day -day operation of the theater is intimately a community of students and community members who love film and who do exactly the same thing as we were doing in 1970. Yeah. And that is still, I think, as fulfilling um, mm -hmm. as, as, as it ever was. And especially for people who are starting out who don't know film, they meet people who do, and they actually learn how to do practical things like management, selling yeah, tickets. Yeah. What do you do with an angry customer yeah, about something? Yes, yes. Um, you know, all of those things are things they learn, but it's not in a, a sort of, you know, like a traditional atmosphere. It's actually a cooperative group of community, and it's a huge resource for the Hartford area. And if I can, like sure, one of the things, sure. one of my fondest memories is going to Cine Studio and after a film, either before or after, running into James or Peter, and then bugging them about films and bugging them about <laughs> yeah, like what, yeah. the film we just watched, what, what, what were we bringing? And even that, I always feel like we were part of it. I remember you had the sheet to like terrific. fill out yes. what we wanted. Yeah. Terrific, terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you guys, we're going to wrap up here, but it's the 22nd of February. Yep. At Center Studios on the campus of Trinity College. Yep. First show in 230 then there's a Correct. break, a reception down in the in the in the uh, theater. Yep. And then the second showing is at 7:30. That's correct. And admission is free. Admission yep. is free, right. and uh, people can park anywhere they like in the parking lots along Summit Street or on the Trinity campus. The, all, right. the, all the parking will be open. All right. And they just have to look through the archway and on Summit the Street and at College that. Terrace. See it. All right. <laughs> I want to thank my guests, James and and Helder, for being here tonight to help us get the word out to you about Cine Studios' 50th anniversary. Everybody has a story. What's your story? Please contact me if you have one at jockojim at gmail.com. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Good night. <laughs>